Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. How are you today? How are you today? When God opens a door, no man is able to close that door. And when he shuts a door, no man will ever be able to open up any to, to open it again. The things that God ended in your life, no man on earth was ever given that authority to close those doors. When it comes to opening and closing doors, Jesus reserves that authority alone. Praise the name of Jesus. Jesus reserves that authority alone. When God chooses to bless you, he will not consult anyone. He will do it by his own. Jesus gave us all authority, but when it came to opening doors and closing them, after they have been closed or shut respectively, he reserves that authority for him. Therefore, do not worry of what is happening in your life. The man holding the master key of your life is God himself and his son and the Holy Spirit. And those three in one do not conspire against each other. They are always in unison, in oneness, in unity. So, if they decided that some problems end in your life, stop fearing and worrying, they will not come back. And when, if they decided to open up doors of blessings or blessing you, be rest assured that blessing is forever. Because when they choose, they do not consult anyone. No one, no evil, will ever be able to shut a door of poverty and of any other situation that God shut behind your back. And no evil and no man and no authority will ever be able to stop you from the blessing God has given you. Just a day of favor, part 13. You're welcome on today's show. Pastor Paul Makanga, your friend. I love you and Jesus loves you too. And because he loves you too, let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, the beginning and the finisher of everything in our lives, the one with the ultimate authority concerning our freedom and our blessings, we ask you even today to favor us to another level. Today, we ask you to come to us as favor. Father God, you're going to bless us for sure. You're going to enlarge our territories indeed. Today you're laying your hand of blessing and favor and acceptance and greatness upon our lives. You're changing our story today. You're giving us a word for our soul, our spirits, and our bodies. Father, you're touching us at our deepest points of need. You're changing everything around us in our favor. You're opening us, you're opening the doors before us for favor. Doors that are called favor are coming our way. Money that is called favor are coming our way. Favor is going to influence us into our blessings. Favor is going to reconnect us to our blessings and is going to disconnect us from all forms and types of curses. Reproaches are ending today. And curses are ending today. Favor is taking over and is taking the driver's seat of our lives. And because favor has come, even heaven has come. Therefore, if heaven has come, we are blessed and we are going to be blessed indeed. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Dear my viewer, in yesterday's episode, just a day of favor, part 12, we discovered that there is another type of favor that acts as an escape route. Today, we are seeing another type of favor. 
a favor that is wrapped in rags that is not easily recognized, not easily appreciated, not easily seen. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Let me read for you this portion of scripture and then we continue. Father God, bless your word and bless us today in Jesus' mighty name. I'm going to read chapter 37 of Genesis, beginning from yesterday's type of favor, which we called Reuben, that is verse 22, and I'm going to read up to verse 28. Verse 22 says, And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might read him out of their hands, to deliver him to his father again. And it came to pass, when Joseph was come unto his brethren, that they striped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty, there was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spices and balm and ma going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brethren were content. I want you to remember that word, and his brethren were content content. Verse 28, Then there passed by Midianites, merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit, and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. And Reuben returned unto the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he rent his clothes, his clothes. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Just a day of favor, part 13, episode 13. Favor, like I told you yesterday, has got types. Every type performs a specific job. Favor has got levels. And every level of favor takes you to another dimension if God gives you that particular level of favor. Today's type of favor is a favor that we rarely see, that we rarely see as a blessing, that we rarely recognize. You see, Reuben, that type of favor called Reuben, is good because that favor saved Joseph from death. His brothers were, they had agreed to kill him and destroy him. They were conspiring and they had reached to an agreement that we are away with Joseph. We must kill him today. And yesterday I told you that the conspiracies, the alliances you see in your life, the people against you, the enemies you have, are not after your soul, your heart, or your body. They are not after you. They are after the calling of God on your life, the purpose of God as to why you were created on this earth in your life, your talents, your gifts, and your destiny. They are after your dreams and your visions. There is nothing else they want to kill because they will not benefit fit in your death, but they will be happy if you die, because if you die, your dreams will not be fulfilled. You know it is very hard to fulfill somebody else's dream. It is okay and it is easy to support other people's dreams, but you can't accomplish their dreams. Why? Because you are, knowing, you are not anointed for their dreams. They have their passion for their dream. They have, compass, they have passion, they have love. If you choose to take somebody else's dream, you will do it but unhappy. Praise the name of the Lord. So, when Reuben gave, came as a favor to save him from death and they agreed to throw him in the pit, then there is another type of favor that we call Judah in this 
portion of the scripture that we've just read. Of course, Judah means praise. Praise the name of the Lord. I do want to go there, but the Holy Spirit is taking me there. You know, praising God activates favor and activates freedom. Praising God activates favor, activates freedom, activates and attracts God in your midst. The Bible says and tells me that God dwells in the midst of the praises of his children. Praise. God sits and dwells among the praises of his children. So when Judah prays, intervened in the situation, Joseph had to be freed on a higher dimension. I didn't come to speak about praise today. I came to speak about favor. But we can't bypass this, the meaning of this name, Judah. But Judah is not only praise in this context and in this portion of the scripture. It means favor. This kind of favor that came with an assumption, with an idea to his brothers, Judah said, instead of leaving him and because... When he came up with this idea, the Bible says all the rest of the brothers were content. They said, okay, we are now settled. If we sell him, it's okay. Before that, while he was still in the pit, they were still looking for ways of killing him. Either by heaping, the, filling up the, the pit with the sand, with the stones, or with whatever they had used to use, or with the rubbish and burn him alive there. Whatever they were planning, they were still making plans of burying him in the pit alive because they were sure they wanted to kill him. The only piece they were waiting for is to see him dead. So the favor of Reuben that saved, from, saved him from death had not yet accomplished the job. So another dimension of favor, which we call Judah here, came in and said, you know what? Instead of killing him, if we kill him, we are going only to remain with his court. We won't have gotten anything out of him. Why can't we sell him and we, we, we share the money? People with money, they will agree to do anything. So when this favor came in in the language of money, in the language of every human being, even in babies understand this language of money, they had to agree and they sold him. Reuben wanted to take him back to his father. Judah said, let's separate him from us entirely forever. Away with Joseph, let him go with his dreams, let him go with his visions, and with all these leadership hopes and illusions he says that he dreams, let him go with his God. This was this type of Judah, this type of favor rather. You know this is what I've come to tell you today. I've come to encourage you today, and may Holy, the Holy Spirit enable me to present it the best way you will understand me. May God favor you today with the kind of favor that will separate you from locality into global or globality if that word is there. This favor saved him, separated him from his family. It was painful, yes, it was bad, yes, but always favor does no mistake. Favor will never do any mistake. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. There is a certain kind of favor that God gives you and the people around you, all of them turn against you because this favor comes and joins your potential, you become bigger, more than they can, they can handle. You become uncontainable in that particular place. You become unbearable in that particular place. You become a great threat in that particular place. 
For example, if you are in a certain organization, when this type of favor, a favor that brings out your potential, if this kind of favor that brings out your potential lands on you, you will become definitely a definite threat to all the people around you. So they will start devising ways of getting rid of you. This time, not killing you as they had wanted before. This Judah came with an idea of totally separating him from his brothers. But here is the best part of it. Whoever chases you away does not remain with your dream. Does not remain with who you are. You go fully packed. You go with all your gifts, you go with all your talents, you go with all your dreams, you go with all your purpose, you go with all your principles, you go with all your influence, you go with all your favor, you go with all your acceptance, you go with all your head, with all your wisdom, with all your knowledge, with all your skills, with all your abilities, with all your strength, you go with all your potential, you go with all your capacity and your weight spiritually. You go with your soul, with your spirit, and with your body. There is an, a kind of favor that lands on somebody with the potential to push you ahead. Sometimes we are stuck and stagnant and delayed in some places. For example, you might have worked for four years as an employee. And today, God sees that you are capable of starting your own business. Do you know what God will do? God will favor you too much, and you will become a threat even to your CEO or to your boss. And the boss, your boss will have no choice but to send you away into your blessings. Sometimes God himself does this. When you are stagnant, you've taken so long in a situation, you are comfortable there, you are used there, you want to stay there. Do you know what God will do? God will cause havoc around you. Praise the name of the Lord. This kind of favor will land on somebody in that organization. And that somebody will stand on his or her feet and says, you know what, Paul Makanga, Paul Makanga, go away. We can't bear you anymore. We are stopping you. They are stopping you, but they, are, they don't know that they are favoring you into your own potential into your own greatness, into your own influence, into your own platforms, into your own adventures. Some people that we are hating today, they actually helped us to go to the next level. For example, if you are in a relationship and your, your boyfriend chucks you today, is it the right word? disappoints you to dance stops the relationship for no reason do you know what he has done he has favored you for a better man if a girlfriend leaves you today she has favored you for a better woman if they chase you today from your workplace they have empowered you to go and start your own business this is what judah did Reuben wanted to keep Joseph there. In, other, in fact, the, 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 the reason as why he wanted him in a pit, he wanted him to stay there for a little bit. When his brothers go away or take the ship somewhere, that he would return Joseph to his father. But returning Joseph to his father meant he was returning him to the same situations. Same situation of jealousy, the same situation of rejection the same situation of his his father into the comfortability of the of, of the love of his father he was denying him ability to become a real man he was killing the leadership calling in his life the son, there are some people that are holding you for too long in their places of work in their places of organizations they are keeping you for too long you can't work for a company until when you have gray hair. You need to wake up and go and start your own things. 
you have the experience now you have the exposure now if you do not come out on a normal way favor will come and push you and take you out of that place in any way possible and establish you into a land where you will flourish for example if you were a girl at your mother's place or your parents place why does a man come and pick you from there he picks you from there to give you the opportunity to become a woman because while you are still in your parents house you remain their daughter it is very awkward and it looks absurd it is not normal for you to have babies or to be a wife to somebody while you are still in your father's in your in your parents home it's awkward If it came as a mistake it was a mistake you had a baby out of wedlock you had a baby while still at your parents home it's okay we are not blaming you but the reason as to why a man comes at your place and takes you to his wife it is because of favor that separates you from your family favor that separates you from your comfortability a comfortability that keeps you comfortable and okay but it destroying your potential your greatness your excellence your supremacy and your powerfulness and your wonderfulness praise the name of the lord jesus jesus You are a wonderful God, a glorious one, a marvelous one. When a husband, a man proposes you and takes you away from your mother's place, you are given favor that will become an opportunity for you to start reproducing, remanufacturing yourself into something else. So those people that chase souls away from their lives It was the hand of favor on them on our behalf that influenced them and commanded them and enabled them as it empowered them to send us to our lands of flourishment. Today's kind of favor, this favor that came to this man to to Joseph and his brother Judah praise said, "Let's sell him." They were not selling him. But that so that was the way favor chose because if they had not sold him there was no way he was going to go into his land of greatness every one of us my viewer viewing me today oh, there is greatness in us there is power there is you were marvel to our generation you were wonder to all the people that are under the sun you are not the very the exactness of what we see today the identity you have today will change by means of favor for example if you were a girl you will turn into a wife that's a changed identity joseph was the last born enjoying the love the comfortability the peace but god had the potential in him god is so greatness in him he saw a prime minister in this little last born he saw a great leader of nations So favor had to come in after a certain level of favor saved him from dying in other words after saving his dreams from being destroyed or delayed or sabotaged then there was another type of favor that he required for him to go into his land of destiny there is canaan land for everyone you have a land of your own blessing there is a land of your flourishment there is a land of your calling for example you might be a prophet of god or a prophetess of god and you are in a place where they hate anything concerning prophecy that's your father's house you will love to get out of there favor will come and take you to a land where they are pro- they appreciate the office of the prophets where they need them where they recognize them you might be a woman of potential in somebody's company but all they are the best they can give you is to make you a janitor you might be capable of starting your own bank or a credit service something a unknown ownership 
but the best they can give you is part of a little money called a salary. Praise the name of the Lord. And you people who are watching me and you are working, use your money wisely. Use it as capital. Maybe God took you there. You once asked God for capital. He spoke to people and they refused. So what he did, he gave you a job that pays even better than you expected. If you are that person I'm speaking to, save that money. You are, may, you are accumulating capital. With the time, you will start your own things. Because favor will come and establish you in two. Your own adventures. Praise the name of the Lord. You see, Joseph in the pit was meant to die. But Joseph, in the hands of the Ishmaelites, the Midianites to Egypt, was meant to greatness. I understand he was crying, weeping, while they were set selling him off, giving him into totally into the hands of total strangers. I understand he cried like any other child. Would you cry when they are separating him or her from her parents? Jesus, you are a wonderful God, a mighty one, a living, loving Father. There is none like you. You lived, you live, and you shall live. The beginning and the ending you are. The Alpha and Omega you are. The orchestrator of everything on this planet. You are the architecture of all planets. The Lord God of all galaxies. We worship you and we give you praise. And we honor you for today. You are a wonderful God. And you are touching us like never before. In Jesus mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Joseph in the pit was meant to die. But Joseph on the way... To Egypt was meant to greatness. Praise the name of the Lord. You see, oh Jesus. Jesus is a good God. Jesus is a good God, a wonderful God. He cried, he wept while he was living. He regretted bringing food to his brothers. He regretted telling his dreams to his brothers. He regretted his, his father. Praise, 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 praise the Lord. Sorry for those interruptions, you know. Network. Praise the name of the Lord. He was regretting of everything that had 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 ever happened to him. Maybe he also regretted as to why he was born. Sometimes the regrets we, we have are not, are not worth it. What you're going through is because you don't know why you're going through that. You wouldn't. If you knew why you're going through what you're going through, you'd be praising God. This was the secret. Judah means praise. In the pit, Judah selling him. It was praise speaking to with, with favor to Joseph. We understand you don't know what we are doing now. We don't, you don't know why we are selling you. We also don't know why we are selling you. Forgive this, your, bro your brothers. Stop crying and weeping because one day that type of weeping will change into the weeping of joy, the tears of joy. Joseph, you were a great man. You are meant to be one of the greatest leaders that have ever lived. You are taking God to Pharaoh. A Pharaoh that calls himself God. You are going to be the introduction of the supernatural in Egypt. Joseph, you are going to save nations of famine one day. You are great among the greatest people. You are destined to greatness, Joseph. If we, we leave you into the comfort you have today, if we leave you in your father's home, amongst these people who want your dreams dead, you will never become a great leader that we intend to make you. Joseph, stop crying. Stop regretting. You were born on purpose. You were the last born on purpose. God spoke to you of those dreams on purpose. Your brothers got jealousy. 
developed jealous against you on purpose, favor through you in the pit on purpose, and me another type of favor called Judah, I am selling you to, to Egypt on purpose. I'm not using any other, other, other people to buy you into slavery because if it was other people, they would have taken you to another land, a land where you would not flourish. But because I am favor and I do everything according to God's will, I know the predestined destiny you have in your life. I know the purpose over your life. Everything is in plan. Even those ones buying you are going to throw you into the house where I exactly want you. Therefore, Joseph, stop crying, stop weeping, stop regretting as to why you were born, as why even that father of yours loved you above other people, as why he called you his favorites among all the children he had, as to as to why he made you look before your brothers that if he dies, you are going to, to inherit him. You'll, you'll, you'll be the heir, and yet you are the last born. Joseph, Joseph, you're going to greatness. So my dear viewer, greatness is coming your way. Miracles that you've never expected. Things that you would not believe even if I told you them today. For example, in those days where I spent almost four days every week without food, where situations forced me to fast, if they spoke to me that one day I will eat and get satisfied and help others eat and get satisfied, I would not believe those people. And one day man prayed for me that I would drive a car and I wanted to stone him. If I was not born again, I was going to box him up and kick him to death. How can you tell me I am going to drive a car one day when I can't even, I, when I'm not even able to provide a shirt for myself? Where will the car come from? Of the shirt and the car, which is more expensive, you must be out of your mind. You are playing with my mind, telling me I would drive a car. How? If somebody in those days told me that a day will come and I will own houses, I will own money, I will own land, I will travel nations, I will preach, I will be a great man, I would look them in the face with the ugliest, groomest face ever. And they would stop those awkward prophecies. Now, what do you think if a prophet came and spoke to, to Joseph while he was being sold? Praise the name of the Lord. What do you think he would feel? He would say, if you were a prophet, a prophetess, somebody is being sold into total strangers, separated from his entire family in a fake way. The only thing he's, do, he's seeing is death, lack of hope, dead, dead end. And you're telling him, you know what? Hmm. You're crying, but this is what the Lord is telling you. You are going to be a great man. You are going to save billions of people from dying of famine. Your brothers will come and bow before you and beg for food. How would you think he would feel? But when favor comes, he comes anyway. He, 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 he comes to you regardless of what you believe, what you expect, or what you see. Because he knows. Because favor is a package. Unwrapped package. Favor is an unwrapped package. A surprise package. Has anyone ever surprised you with a package? Or with a gift in, ra in, a, in wrapping papers or in a, in a bag? That's how favor comes. He comes unwrapped. Wrapping all the blessings of God in him. He becomes a wrapping bag of God's blessings in your life. 
So when he does his things, in actual sense, and in most cases, we do not understand what favor is doing. You can't convince me that even though Joseph had dreams, had dreamt one day, he was going to be a leader, you know, you know. You can't convince me that while they were selling him off by this favor that saved him from the pit. Excuse me. <clears throat> I love you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. <coughs> Jesus is a great Jesus. You can't convince me that he knew what was happening. He didn't know. But favor had come. First, Favor saved him from being destroyed by knives and by fire or by sand or by being buried alive in the pit. But he didn't understand what was going on. Are you in that state? You must be in that state, my viewer, where you do not understand what is going on. You don't know why all problems seem to come your way. You don't know why everyone hates you for no reason. You don't know why things do not work out the way you expect. Even Joseph never knew that if these men that were buying him as a property were actually taking him to his greatness. Joseph never knew that these brothers that were selling him were actually giving him the, the opportunity for his dreams to stand on a fertile ground. Praise the name of the Lord. That's how things of God work, my dear. It is very hard, except in some cultures, where a man marries from his father's house. Like that family of Abraham, where he came from. But when people grow up, they have to go and start their own businesses, their own companies, their own families. Favor does that. Praise the name of the Lord. Do you want to tell me you have no destiny? And you expect me to believe that, my viewer? You think you can convince me? That because you're going through a lot, God has forgotten you. Which kind of God? My God? Jesus Christ. No, my dear. You want to, 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 to make me bow to those lies from the enemy. That God has forsaken you. God is disappointing you. God has forgotten all about you. Really? Not my Jesus. My Jesus never forsakes, never abandons, never disappoints. He works even when we do not understand what is taking place. Is there any genius person on this planet that knows how a baby grows in the inside of a mother's womb? Is there such a person on this planet? Is there a person that can fully explain how our fingernails grow? We keep on trimming them every day or every week, but they keep on coming. We never finish them. And yet, they end here. Is there a person on this planet that can explain, can number, even those great math mathematicians we cherish? Is there any great mathematician that can number the number of our hair? And yet God does. Who is greater? Your situation or a God, the God you're following? Who is greater? Your problems or the problem solver? Jesus is your problem solver. Favor is solving your problems. Because favor is, has established you today on your way to greatness, to supremacy, to influence, and to the introduction of God. In that particular area, you're going to your land of flourishment, your land of expansion. Praise the name of the Lord. For example, you might be renting somewhere in a two-roomed house or in a single-roomed apartment, and God is over-blessing you. Your room is becoming so small for the blessings of God. Aren't you sensing that God is taking you in a broader, expanded place? Praise the name of the Lord. May favor take you from where you are today and take you to where you will flourish, my dear viewer. 
you were a girl, you were going to flourish as a mother. You will be a mother to twins, to babies, to children. You were a man, you were calling yourself a boy because you're sleeping, you're still staying with your daddy's, your parents' place, or with your siblings. You can't marry from there. God, so what God will do will take you there, even when you do not understand what is taking place. Because favor comes in disguise. Favor comes as a wrapping bag to all God's blessings in your life. As a surprise gift. As a gift with no name. When someone gives you a wrapped, a wrapped gift, the only thing you will know is that that is a gift in a box, but the only thing you will be seeing is this wrapping bag. May favor become your wrapping paper, your wrapping bag, so that wherever you go favor, people will look at that bag on you, that garment or your, that coat, whatever you call it, on you, and they will do what is necessary for your greatness. You know Joseph went through a lot of hands, his father's hands, his brother's hands, the hands of the pit, the hands of Judah, the hands of the Ishmaelites, and then into the house of Potiphar. Favor will take you where you're supposed to go. Favor will lead the way. Favor will connect you. You can't prosper from where you are. Favor must take you away. Even those people chasing you away, thank God for them. They don't know what they are chasing away. They don't know what they are selling. They are seeing you of a less value than who exactly you are. That is also in today's scripture. Let me read it for you. They sold him for a few pieces of, that is verse 28 of Genesis 37. Then there passed by Midianites merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit, and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver. They are selling a prime minister of a less value. In other words, that's how much they thought Joseph was costing. Some people underuse us. They underestimate us. They devalue you. They think you are that simple. They think you are that poor. They think you are incapable. Haven't you ever seen it in a certain company? They promote others and they leave others down. What is the implication of those people they didn't promote? They didn't promote them because they thought they don't measure up to their standards. They are incapable. Of do of executing their things, but they do not know. People have a way of devaluing you, devaluing us. Jesus was sold for only 30 pieces. This one, Joseph, was sold for how many pieces? For only 20 pieces of silver. The devil thought Jesus was all that of a less value and he sold him for 30 pieces of silver and these brothers of Joseph, they did not recognize the greatness and yet God gave them a chance because he spoke his dreams to them. They knew the meaning, but instead of saying, let's get use of him, let's hold him, let's stay with him, they sold their greatness into another nation, into a fallen land. Far, my viewer, stop begging to stay. Let me say that again. Stop begging to stay. If they are devaluing you and they think they do not need you in their company, let them let you go. This is what happened. This is what happened to the children of Israel in Egypt. They had the slaves who did everything for them. They built for them all the pyramids they still even have today. They made Egypt the greatest nation in their days. But they didn't see that value. 
The only value they saw on them was to make them slaves. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. It's like having a cow and the only value we see in your cow is milk. And yet there is yogurt, there is butter, there is dung, there is meat, there is everything in a cow. If someone gives you one cow, he has made you the richest to become. They saw slaves instead of inventors. They took their inventions, their wisdom, their energy, their strength, their skills in lay, brick laying and in building. But the only value they saw on the, the Israelites was slavery. That was their value. Judas Iscariot, though he was his calling, the devil thought Jesus was worth only 30, 30 pieces of silver. These brothers of Joseph saw, only, saw him as at a value when they calculated, they, when they did accounting. When they came, the, the valuers of his life valued his life. They only saw 20 pieces of silver. Instead of holding the dreamer, they wanted to kill the dreamer. Instead of hosting the dreams, they sold away their dreams. My dear viewer, stop begging to stay. I recognized that thing very long time ago. When I'm in a place and they don't see my worth, I start asking God to take me somewhere else. When I'm with someone and he undervalues me and what I can offer, I call for somebody else from the hand of God. It is not being proud. It is knowing who you are and believing in yourself. There are some nations, when they see a black man, all what they see is a beggar. There are some men, whenever they see a woman, all they see about a woman is a dumb mat, is a sex Machine, a sex, material. There are some men with money thinking they can have any girl they want because they have money. They are devaluing you. They devalued this man. God gave them a chance. He told them who Joseph was. In other words, he was telling them, take care of him. I want this greatness for this family. God can take you to a company where he wants to expand. They are, they are crying to God, God, give us the skills, the ideas, the wisdom. Then he takes you there. And instead of recognizing your greatness to their company, they think you are worth 20 pieces of silver. There are some nations where they treat maids, even Worse than dogs. There are some places where they treat workers as if they are meant to be workers forever. My dear friend, I'm not making you to become, I'm not causing you to become a big headed, stubborn, rebellious person. No. I'm just making you recognize when favor comes, he anoints the greatness in you. The goodness in you. Oh Jesus, I worship you. Oh Jesus, I give you praise. Oh Jesus, I love you. Oh Jesus, you are wonderful. Oh Jesus, you are glorious. You are all powerful. You are omnipresent. You are here. You are here. And you forever exist. You are a well of water that never runs dry. You are a river capable to flow to all nations, to every family at the same time. You are the spring of life. 
Do you know your worth? My viewer, do you know your worth? Do you know your calling? Did you know that you are not as people see you are? And you people who want always to depend on how people call you or how people see you, everyone thinks they are the head of others. They have a way of putting others down. When favor comes, does the exchange does the opposite when they consider you as a girl favor comes and it makes you a woman and a wife to somebody when they call you a boy favor comes on you and it makes you a man and a husband to someone when they call you barren favor comes on you and it makes you a mother to many when they call you a reject favor comes to you and it favors you and makes you a great one Oh, favor, we love you. Favor, you're good. Favor, you're wonderful. You're capable of setting us to the highest attitudes. Favor, you can do it for us. Oh, favor, you can help my viewer. You can change our destiny. Favor, you can set us on the way to our greatness. Favor, you can become our potential and everything about us changes. Favor, I believe in you. You can change this woman watching me, this man watching me, into nobody has ever expected us to be. Favor, you can open doors that no man can open. Favor, you can save us from pits. You can save us from destruction. You can save us from locality. You can save us from darkness. You can save us from poverty. Favor, you are able and capable. You can take us to places where our real value will come out. Praise the name of the Lord. Favor will take you into a place of celebration where they will celebrate you. You know, I don't want to be a celebrator, a follower. You are supposed to be the subject. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. I understand you might think, ah, this pastor, this pastor might be big-headed. When it comes to self-worth, self-identity, I am the most rebellious one on this planet. I can't allow, allow anyone to devalue someone while I am watching. Because I believe everyone is worth it. Everyone is capable. Everyone is able and everyone contains something we need for us to prosper. Praise the name of the Lord. Selling Joseph only for 20 pieces. They, were, they, they remained 11. Now 20 divided by 11. How much did each one get? Favor, will you save us from devaluers? Will you take us to lands, to our lands of recognition? Favor, will you take us to our places of celebration? Favor, will you take us to our places of greatness and love? Favor, will you take us to, to our divine connections? Favor, because you are powerful and you are a package of all our blessings, we rest our trust in you. Do the job. Do the driving. We will do the sitting in your car. And when we reach into our destinies, establish us there, O oh, favor, in Jesus' name. And my viewers says, Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. May favor save you from devaluers. Have ever been devalued? You've ever been devalued. And you might be at your place of devaluation. You know... These banks has people they call valuers, evaluators, valuers. When they owe you money and you have a debt with them and they want to sell off your property, they send the valuers to determine the value of your house. 
but in most cases they do the work of a thief they do not say the right value people when it becomes to self worth they will always devalue you thinking you are only 20 pieces and yet you are the most expensive commodity that god has ever produced let me say that again to you my viewer on this planet earth you are the most expensive commodity this planet has ever got joseph was the most expensive he was more expensive than the firstborn he was more expensive even by more than his dad and mom because he came as their leader not as their son joseph never came to this family as their brother he came as their leader as their food provider as a leader of his entire family because when he dreamed and spoke his dreams of the moon the sun and the stars to his dad his dad said hey joseph you mean one day we are going to bow to you meaning he didn't come as a son to them did you know do you know how you came you didn't come as a mere person on this planet you came as god's purpose you came as god's plan you came as god's glory you came as god's excellence when creation looks at you they wonder and marvel what on earth you are which kind of a person you are i want you to start accepting your value you are the most expensive even on the global level don't allow anybody in a situation or in a demon tell you out of your greatness out of your expensiveness you 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 there is no amount that that can buy you the most expensive boy in their family was sold for only 20 pennies and these men that you know the value of people moreover which doctors wizards and warlocks in egypt potiphar and pharaoh they welcomed this expensive commodity into their home no wonder everything he touched there prospered those prosperities those blessings were meant for his family but because of these evil minds of ours that cause us always to devalue people we end up losing and selling off greatness my viewer you are the greatness i speak about today even if you were woman you are the joseph i am speaking about today maybe they devalued you for example you you can be very much educated and they, yet they pay you very little money even a person that never went to school earns more than you do it's okay my dear today i release this kind of favor on your life because this favor will bring out the real value of you favor will establish you into the hands of people and into the lands of people that will appreciate will tremble before your greatness that will recognize your 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 value your value how can i explain it because i feel even when i tell you you are the most expensive there is no amount on this planet that is capable of buying your dream your dreams are so heavy just a day of favor is what you need and today's kind of favor is a favor that will bring out your value Sometimes husbands devalue women and sometimes wives devalue husbands sometimes parents devalue children sometimes children devalue parents we all need a revival in this area we need a reform reconsider your value my viewer you're not what people tell you you're not where your your situations fixed you 
and you're not what the devil says. You are who you are. Your value is not 20 pieces of silver. You are more expensive than that and more capable than that. And if people choose to let you go, go. Good enough. You do not go empty. They can't take away. When they sold him for 20, it didn't mean they retained his worth. No. He went with his exact value. And one day, his real value came out. And he became a prime minister of all nations in those days. Dear friend, your value will come out. But it is today's kind of favor that will take you there. You know, I love you, my viewer. And Jesus loves you too. Encourage your friends to watch. Share this message to them. Do not miss any episode. Make sure you watch every day. And may God bless you. I want to bless my partners. Those people who call me and give me some support. Financial, encouragement, advice devices to use. I thank you. May God bless you. Thank you. Even those who call for prayer, for advice, those who call for advice, we thank God because He's a wonderful God. I thank God for all my partners around the world. Be blessed and may God bless you in a special way. And I pray for those people who sh always share my messages to his friends. May God bless you too. And I pray for you, my viewers, who tell your friends about this show. May God bless you too. And I pray for those ones who always watch me on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on, on, on YouTube, everywhere. God bless you too. And I thank those people also who give me a call, inviting me to preach in their churches and in conferences. And may God bless you also. In Jesus' name. I'm privileged you to be my viewer. I, it is a privilege. And I thank you for God. You are important. And because you are important, may God bless you with an important blessing. In Jesus' mighty name. If you're not born again, I love you more than you can imagine. And Jesus loves you more than you can imagine. The good thing about Jesus, he accepts us the way we are. So I ask you to receive him today as your Lord and Savior, the way you are. Don't worry about your sins, he will take care of them. Don't worry about your mistakes, your incapabilities, and what people call you. Jesus will erase all of that from you. So receive him now and say, Dear Lord Jesus, save me today. I give you my life forever. I am born again. Remove my names from the book of the dead and reestablish them in the book of the living. In Jesus' name I am saved forever. Amen. Father God, today's kind of favor asks us to forgive those people that chased us away. We forgive them. Today's favor asks us to have a better attitude on what is happening in our lives. We thank you for that better understanding of our situations. Today's favor affirms that we are the most expensive commodities you have. We thank you for that too, O oh God. Today's favor that you've given us today is taking us to places, to people that will recognize our value, our callings, our gifts, our talents, and our skills. We thank you for that. We ask favor to do the rest of the job on our behalf. Bless us beyond words you can pray. Bless us beyond our prayers and above our faith. Bless us to the shock above our faith expectations. Bless us with more than we expect of you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I love you, my viewer. Today, we are discovering another type of favor you don't want to miss in Jesus' name. Have a lovely time. May my wonderful God make you a wonder 
in Jesus name and may my God of wonders satisfies you may he satisfy you may my God of wonders satisfy you with wonders in Jesus name don't forget I love you with all love there is and Jesus loves you with everything called love in Jesus name amen bye bye